in the previous video, we went through and created our zombie base class, which honestly is just a simple class that contains really nothing in it. So if we look through it, we haven't done anything, and we are going to set it up so he will chase after the closest player. So pretty much, let's say he's chasing one person, someone else gets closer, he's going to switch and try to chase him. So we can go ahead and begin on that. One thing I do want to change is I want to change his movement speed. So if we click to our zombie base class, our blueprint version, character movement, max walk speed, let's go ahead and set that just to 300. Cut it in half. And now we need to start working on the AI. So first thing we need is an AI controller. So we're going to create a blueprint class. AI controller. Let's just call this one AI controller zombie. And in the event graph, let's go to begin play. All we're going to do is simply right click, type run, and run behavior tree. And link it up. Next, we have to actually make our behavior tree. So we're going to right click, artificial intelligence, behavior tree. We're going to do bt underscore zombie, and we're also going to make a blackboard. So artificial intelligence, blackboard, bb underscore zombie. Next, we'll go back to our zombie base class. On the right side, under pawn, we have AI controller class. Let's set that to AI controller underscore zombie, and change auto possess AI to place in the world or spawned, and save it. Uh, the other thing is, this is checked by default. It doesn't really matter too much, but if you notice, he uh, snaps a lot. I'll, I'll show you an example here in a bit. So this is as default right now. Let's go ahead and in our AI controller, let's select our behavior tree zombie. Compile and save. Now let's open up our blackboard and behavior tree. So here's where we're going to have to start doing some custom stuff. Uh, obviously, I'll just give you an example real quick. There's a bunch of tasks already that come with it that can kind of do stuff accordingly and how you want them, maybe. But we need to write some custom conditions or things to really do what we want. And those are going to be under new tasks. So tasks are like, well, they're literally tasks. So let's say I want go over, walk to this location, and pick up this rock. Well, those would be two tasks. You would run the first task on completion. You would run the second task to pick up the rock. Decorators, they can be used. Uh, mostly, we're probably going to be using them for conditions, but as of right now, I don't think we're going to have any since we don't have any sort of way to really attack. And services, I'm not entirely sure on what all they do, but as far as I know, they're kind of like... Uh, helpers like that stuff that's continually runs to check i think i could be wrong there and sequences are pretty much something that would run things in a sequence so for example i'll do three tasks as you can see they each have numbers on them one two and three so if i change the order i move this move to to the middle it's now 1, 2, and 3. Now it's 1, 2, 3. It runs things in a sequence from left to right. And that's what we're going to need. So we go ahead and place down a sequence. And we can start working on our Blackboard. So in our Blackboard, we're going to click on New Key. We're going to do Object. This object, I'm going to call it Player Key. Then we go to Key Type, Base Class. Change it from object to actor, and save. And now what we need to do, BT zombie, or uh, behavior tree, we're going to create a new task. And this task is going to figure out the closest, um, uh, what do you call it, the closest player to the zombie. And then after that runs, it's going to make a move to. So we're going to move to that closest player. So for example, 
if I get the move to task, the blackboard key that it shows by default, well, it goes to player key. So player key is going to be essentially, think of it like a, a reference to our player. So we can go ahead and start by making a new task. It's going to automatically do this. Go ahead and click browse to browse to it so we can rename it because it gives it that default name. We're going to change it to btt underscore find closest player and go back to it. Now, we're not really going to be doing any sort of optimizing or anything in this because we don't really need to at the moment to worry about it. We're just going to get it working. So under functions, we're going to go to override, receive, execute, AI. And when this runs, well, this uh, task runs, this is going to run. So what we're going to do here is find the closest player to our controller or to our controlled pawn. So we're going to do git all actors of class. It's going to be of type BP underscore character base. Then we're going to do a for each. And now we need to start doing the logic to figure out the closest player. So what I'm going to make do is make two new variables. This one's going to be closest distance. It's going to be a float. I'm going to make another one, call it closest player. That's going to be a reference to our character base, like so. Closest distance, I want to give it a default value of pretty much just going to spam nines. And we can go ahead and begin. So let's figure out the distance, well, the closest distance. So from this array element, I want to do distance to. So it'll be get distance to. The actor we want to get the distance to is the controlled pawn, pretty much our zombie. Then for the return value, we're going to check and make sure it's less than our closest distance. And if it is, what we will do is we will set our closest player to equal the array element that we're on because he is closer than our closest distance. And then we're going to set closest distance to equal the get distance to. So that way it continually will get smaller and smaller until it finds the closest one, in which case it doesn't do anything anymore. And then on complete, what we're going to do is we're going to do what was it? Finish, execute, and check success. That worked like that. But we also need to set the Blackboard key, which was player key. So we're going to right click, type in Blackboard, and we set Blackboard value as object. And I'm going to connect up that to finish execute and this to complete. So we set the object value and then we finish the execution. So the value is going to be closest player, just to make it neat. And then for the key, what we can do is we can right click, promote to variable, and give it the variable name of the key. In our case, it's player key. Just like so. And that will set set our closest player in player player key. And then we finish it off. So we should be good to go. Let's go back to our behavior tree. I'm gonna drag off under tasks and do our find closest player that we just made. And then our move to is gonna be second. So let's give it a test, and we should be moving to ourselves. As you can see, it just moved to that closest person. Now it's moving to us. But we have that problem where, even though we're farther away than that player there, it's still going to us. In which case, we're going to have to recreate this move to node to kind of, I'm not sure what all goes on behind the scenes of this. I can't really see it, well, at least as far as I know, easily. So we're going to have to kind of recreate it ourselves. Now to do that, 
we're going to create another task. So new task, same thing. We're going to go ahead and rename it. BTT underscore um, move to player and open it up. So we're going to create a new variable. Give it the name player key or uh, what was it called by default? Blackboard key. So give it the name blackboard key. And let's change it to search for the blackboard key selector, instance editable, and expose it on spawn. Now let's delete this move to in our behavior tree and bring up our new task that we just made to do this for us. And see, under blackboard key, it's already filled out player key, and it's it's already pretty much set up how it was before. So now we just need to use it. So under functions, we're going to do receive execute AI again. And the owner controller is the AI controller. So if we drag off of this and do move to, we could do move to actor. And it's pretty much going to handle everything for us. We just got to figure out the actor that we want, which is our goal. What we're going to do is we're going to right click, get blackboard value as actor. And we need the key. So right click, start to variable, and it's gonna be called what was it? Player key. Like so. Then we can just link that right in to goal. Okay. All these other settings are fine by default. We just need to do the final or what was it? finished, execute, link it up, and check it as success, file, and save. Well, actually, what we can do is on the return value here, can, oh, what was it? I'm trying to remember how to break down the enum. The reroute? Ah, there we go. So here we have request successful, already at goal, and failed. So what we can do is we want to perform an OR. And I'm going to do another one of these. Dang it. Ah. I'm being stupid here. Equal enum. So it's going to be already at goal and request successful. If either of those are true, we're going to finish the execution as success. If it's false, we're going to finish as failed. Like so. Let's compile and save and give it a try. All right, so he's moving to that guy. Let's open a region first. All right, going towards us. And he should be going on to him, which he completely is not. So we can also look at our behavior tree as it goes. It was constantly looping through. Might be helpful to add a weight in between. Let's do like 0 0.3 and give it a try. So he's running towards us. And he went to that guy as he was closer. Let's try to get him on us, lead him away a little bit. All right. So he's led away. I'm going to bring him closer and try to run away just to see if he snaps onto him. Which I think we're probably not running fast enough, which is a problem. But 
You should go into him. Alright, why are you not? Yeah, because you're still looping through them all just fine. For now, I'm just going to link it straight up to success and check it and see if, for whatever reason, that broke it. Alright, so we snap it onto us. Or it might just be honestly because it's a fake, uh, whatever you call it, it's not properly registering it. I don't know. Give it a try with two clients. Let's try to lead them away. This can be a pain in the butt to switch. Now you see that fast snap that he did? That's the one I was talking about. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to really catch up. But he does at least switch between. So we're going to leave it at that for now. But the thing I want to talk about before, about the fast turning, come back over here. When you have use controller rotation yaw, when it's checked for the AI, that's going to make it so he's kind of like he snap rotates almost. So if I show you an example again, I'll hit those and I'll be behind him, he'll be smooth. And see, it's smooth turning. And that's what we want there. So we at least have AI now that follows us. I want to lower the move speed again. I'm going to move it down to, let's do 150. Give it one final quick try. And test the movement. See if he rotates. So he's struggling to find the closest, but that'll be something we can always fix later. But we had at least now have a moving zombie that is able to just function. So that's good at least. So now that we have that in place, we can actually start working on a lot more of the gameplay aspects, such as points, shooting, damage, all that kind of stuff. So, I will see you in the next one.